Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Billy the Jaegerist, and as you can see, today is a much different video. And I know I have terrible handwriting. Don't blame me. I'm a guy. I just wanted to put this up here so you guys know this is a whiteboard. So today we're going to be tackling the very popular and very difficult question of why did Aaron see memories of the future, see the future when he did not have the Titan powers yet? Uh, this is going to be a very in-depth video. So if, you, if, this is, if you're that type of guy who likes really, really in-depth, really analytical videos, this is definitely the video for you. So buckle up and get ready because it's going to be an extremely detail-oriented, complicated, cerebral video. And another very important thing, um, this is a manga spoiler territory. Please, 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 I cannot tell you enough, please, 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 click off of this video and unsubscribe from the channel. Any spoiler will ruin the experience of AOT. AOT is an incredible show and I, I didn't see you get spoiled. With that out of the way, I'm now going to start to begin, begin to explain this. Uh, now, as you saw on the whiteboard, my answer to this, why Aaron sees the future, is actually, well, he's actually not seeing the future. From what I see, Aaron is actually seeing the past. Yes, he's seen the past. And they say, well, Beluga, we see his mother getting eaten, we see Hans getting eaten. Yes, that is from the previous loop. So this is why I had the white draw. This, this is the loop, right? Let's say this is this is this is this is the tree. I, I'm terrible at drawing. Please bear with me. This this right here, this little circle, this little, this little circle is the loop. I put the stick in here to represent the end. This is the end. This is this is 138. Eight. This is chapter one. Right. So this is the loop. So. If you were to put, you know, on on his death here, his mom here, rumbling here, yada, yada, you know, yada yada yada, these different events, right? Aaron, when he's in chapter one, you can say, well, he has visions of the future, on his death, his mom, the rumbling, yada yada yada. But, but, but you could also look at it as Aaron is viewing it from the past. Let's see, because this happened before. Let's say this has been looped six times. All this stuff would have happened six times already. So, because it's a circle, you could view it as him viewing the future or him viewing the past. Okay. So, I just use this to establish that. Now, before we go any further about the time, it, it is important to bring this up. All of this, all of this is speculation. It's speculation because of this. Now, you could read the full quote here. I'm going to leave this up for a while. But, uh, no, actually, I'm going to leave it up for a while. Pause the video if you want to read the quote. Okay, you're done? Great. So, the, the real important part about this quote is the end. I can't say that it is a loop, and I can't say that it's not a loop. It's up for the readers to decide. So that means, that means that since they are not going to tell us if there's a loop or not, they will not tell us, they will not tell us the mechanics of said loop. So I have to speculate about all this. And this is why I'm making this video in part. In part I want to explain it, and in part I really, this is a time, this is, it's very good, where the AOT community it's a time loop community it needs to come together and just roll all our ideas at the board have a discussion have a discourse i'm here to start a discourse and add discourse this is the first time you read the time loop theory great this is not the first time you read the time loop theory great too i'm providing my perspective you can get other people's perspectives and if you're and especially if you're an defender, please i implore you look at the aoe bros look at hope chats read their literature about the time loop if you're interested because they may not understand the story they may be wrong about a lot of things but remember, guys, what is one of their biggest flaws? They overanalyze the story. They overanalyze, overanalyze the story. They're bound to analyze something that, that you didn't pick up on or you didn't realize. And they could be wrong about 90% of things, but they could also be right about 10% of things. They could be right. They could be right about a specific thing, but wrong about its reasoning. For example, ice cream correlation causation fallacy. If you, if you haven't heard of it, it goes like this. The rise in ice cream sales is correlated to the rise in drownings right so someone could extrapolate from that data aha that means we should make ice cream illegal well no that means we should make ice cream illegal if they did all that research and they found that out and then they made that conclusion guess what you can take the conclusion 
throw it away, but still keep the research. So I just want to get it out there. Read everything. Watch everything you can if you're interested in this. So I'm here just to throw my two cents. This is, this is how I would explain it. So he's seen the past. What do I mean? By how does this work? Well, another important thing to bring up, and this is something that you may have heard beforehand and brushed it off because you might have heard it from Hope Chad, but this is an undisputed fact. This is, this is not something up that's up for debate. This is not the theory. It's not extrapolation. It's 100% fact. And that is the fact that 138 is the prologue of the story. Now, here's the important part. Here's the important part. It's not what it's, what it's not. What it's not is, it's not the beginning. Okay. It's not the beginning of the loop the story the beginning starts in chapter one okay so from chapter one to his death okay now again not 131 his death now why do i say that well because before this happened 138 is the prologue of the story so the prologue scroll short Prologue is actually the long dream. That's the prologue of the story. That's where the time loop begins and ends. Right? Or where it begins. There we go again. Now, once my whiteboard comes back up, this is, this is exactly why I wanted uh, to use... Okay, so long dream is the prologue. Now, this is where it gets really complicated. So... Now, now this is why I say the distinction. Look at, let's look at the anime. Now, the reason why my most popular video popped off, the See You Later video, was because I was trying to show people how MAPPA did not retcon anything. And if you're a, a quote-unquote casual fan, you may have not also not realized this seemingly... Uh, contradictory uh, element of, of core one. And that would be, look at this. Look at this. It's right here. This is the anime, right? This is the anime. And as you can clearly see here, Aaron is a child. This is child. This is nine-year-old Aaron. This is child Aaron. Right? Now, <laughs> the interesting thing about this is that in the manga, this is what the manga looks like. The manga is adult Aaron. So we have adult, adult Aaron is here in the cabin. Then we have manga Aaron. Okay, so this would seem as though it is a, uh, it's a, it's a contradiction. Actually, it's not. And this is what I mean by Aaron is the in the past. Check this out. So let me, let me actually delete, and actually, no, I'm not going to move down. So let, let, let's move down for a second. Here's what I mean by this. Remember, so you got... What's happened in the loop is Aaron dies when he's 19 years old. So 19 years old. So let, let's let's I'm gonna symbolize Aaron with, with long oh and a frown. So this is this is this is this is long this is this is this is 19 year old Aaron, right? Aaron dies when he's 19 years old. This is what he did. This is the day of the end of his life. He loops when he's nine year old Aaron, symbolized by him being happy and happy and short. Okay. Again, sorry for the terrible drawings. Please just try to get to the video. Not calling economy. Sorry. So his consciousness, his being, his person is being moved from one area of his bot from what from one part to another. So this Aaron, this Aaron has all the subconscious memories of, of Hans's death, his mother's death, the rumbling, yada yada yada, in his subconscious, right? Or he could be thinking about them before he dies, whatever. His subconscious his mind is being transferred to young aaron right who does not have all of this or again or or or, or he could be thinking about this before he dies that's another that's, that's also possible again this is very open and it's very ambiguous we're not going to get the exact mechanics this is up to us to interpret it so how, here's how i interpret i interpret it as aaron aaron is actually the subconscious part of all the memories is being fused into him. And remember, remember, Aaron is turning from this, so sorry, from this to this. 
So my theory is, or my explanation is, as the time is loop is resetting, he's being turned to a child, back to that, back to what he is. So, and this is why, and this is why, you may say another inconsistency that you might say is, well, Beluga, um, this is this is a plot hole in, in Attack on Titan is that the la Aaron shouldn't see Mikasa in her blouse and uh. In her, in her blouse and card, this cardigan, a cardigan with, with long hair, uh, before she kills him, because it's not the last thing he sees. So, why is that being shown to us? Well, dear sir, you're exactly right, because the last thing he sees is actually this. Notice, before he's about, he's about to die, he. Oh, sorry about that. Before he's about to die, he's, he opens his eyes for the first time since. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> if you know, you know. Now he opens his eyes. And he looks up at Mikasa, who's about to kill him. And then he, and then of course he he he, he consensually kisses her. They both consent to a kiss. So maybe he sees her like like her forehead or whatever, or her eyes, whatever, before he dies. So one might ask, well, but look, if this is the last thing he sees, why is this not in the why is this not in the dream? Why is this not in chapter one? And why is this not never shown? That is because one thirty eight is the prologue. So, right before the time loop resets, so let's let's go back to my to my stupid uh my stupid circle. I, I wish I wish my my sister was here. My sister's a great artist. Uh, not, she's not into Attack on Titan, so unfortunately you have to be stuck with me. So let's go back to my circle. Here's the crazy part. So the loop starts. Let's say it's, let's say the loop begins in chapter one. That's a one, and it ends at his death. So it starts chapter one and it ends at his death. But it resets. Here's the thing. It resets. Right here. It resets. In 138. The long dream. The loop begin. It, it genuinely begins. When Aaron is. When, it, when Aaron's under the tree. When he's nine years old. And it genuinely ends when he dies. It ends. The loop. En the loop is over. The, the timeline is over when he dies. So we're going to go back to my. To my. To my little. Uh, my little timeline. Back, back up here. Remember. It starts like this, starts chapter, starts chapter one, goes up to his death, and then it gets looped. So what you're seeing down here is just what you see up here, only this line is turned into a circle. Okay? This is why I have the whiteboard. I apologize. This is, like, is going to be the last video of the whiteboard, okay? So, with that in mind, the loop is uh, gets re gets reset in one thirty eight, which would explain which would explain why Aaron the last thing Aaron sees and why it's shown in chapter one and chapter and, and uh, core one why it's shown is this because this is the last thing he sees before the loop gets reset. See, it's not the last thing he sees before he dies. Rather, it's the last thing he says before the loop gets reset. And as we can see, oh, bro. Yeah, here it is. And as you can see, he's morphing from adult to child, adult to child. So Aaron's, obviously, since it's being looped, he goes from being, this is my 19 here, to nine here, and in between this point, I have a circle here. He morphs from a nineteen-year-old to a nine-year-old, which is why he's morphing bodies, and it's, which is why he uh, has all the memories. Because remember, when I mentioned, I, I deleted it. Remember that even though. From nine-year-old Aaron's perspective, this is why, this is why it's good that I have this thing. From nine-year-old Aaron's perspective, his mom dies here. Um, put an M for that. Mom dies, sorry, poor M. His mom dies here. Honest dies here. I really appreciate you guys putting up the whiteboard. From nine-year-old Aaron's perspective, it's in the future. But for 19-year-old Aaron, at the end of the loop, it's in the past. And see, this is why I have the whiteboard, even though this is not my forte at all. It's in the past, you see. So, as the beforehand, so his subconscious is, is he knows it or he's thinking about it. So he's actually not using 
any Titan power, no trickery, no plot hole, no nothing. It's just the past that is happening that is a meta way of foreshadowing it. And speaking of meta, let's talk about why the time loop exists. I, I believe, this is my speculation, and this, this is all from Cognitive Sash, as, as, as you guys may or may not know, is that the time loop is actually Aaron's punishment. Now, I, I absolutely love this theory because it is the best punishment I've ever seen for a villain ever. You always see villains do like super evil, terrible things, and they get a very light punishment in return. Like, let's say, like, say for example, Thanos. Like, if he's as evil as everyone says, and again, I'm, I'm not a Marvel fan, so I'm not gonna make a extrapolation about that. Him just, I think he was beheaded, right? He was beheaded or he was stabbed. He was beheaded and then stabbed. Something like that. Anyway, that's not proportional to his crimes. But for Aaron, Aaron's punishment fits the crime perfectly. Every single person he killed gets to have the just to knowing that he was killed again. He's killed again and again and again and again and again and again. And the best part is he loops on the day of his mom's death. He loops the day the, the, the day he loops is the day his mom dies. So he killed people's loved ones and he and he killed people himself. So he gets the, he he gets he goes to the loop. At the beginning of the loop, he, someone's, his loved one gets killed. And, most notably, he's not free. If, if, I'll explain this from my Aaron Cantor analysis. Aaron lost his freedom when he was nine, year, nine years old. That is a completely different conversation. And it's going to polarize this video more. So, that, I'll leave that where it is. So, his, so his mom dies. And, and he's not free. All the way up to when he gets killed, the death penalty, by his lover. So, he goes to this... Oh, you know, as many, you know, Sash says as many times as you, as you read the book or watch the anime, yada yada yada. It sold, you know, I think 300 million copies, something like that. Anime's been watched countless times. So basically, what I'm saying is that for every life Aaron took and for every life that someone has to experience losing because of Aaron, Aaron is paid for it in full. I think it's a great. It's a great way to punish a villain. It's a great way to have time travel. It's a great mechanic. I think it's really cool. It's a, it's a cool bit of foreshadowing. I mean, this is why I was in time loop theory as an end defender because we have all these cool stuff all within one, I was about to say simple, all within one mechanic of this time loop. And it also reinforces determinism. And it's, it's just a really, really cool um, thing. And so um, that's, that, 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 that's what I believe about the time loop. Now, as far as why does he loop when he's nine and how does he loop? I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you. I have no idea. I, I honestly, I, I'm sorry, I could not tell you. I, I really, really couldn't tell you. Now, Sash says it's because he says he wants to be with Mika son, Armin, and everyone else. That's his wish. And so the hallucinogena acts according to their wishes, which is true, which is, which is true. The, the hallucinogena does act according to his wish, or does act according to the wishes of the person and manifests what they want. Um, but why when he's nine? Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't he just be looped back to when he met Mikasa, or when, or when him and Mikasa and Armin were hanging? Because because he said Mikasa and Armin. Um, I honestly, honestly, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I really wish I could tell you everything. I I genuinely do not know why it specifically comes back to when he's nine years old. I also haven't played Love Love. This is what I'm saying. I will hand this off to the AOE Bros. I, I have no problem with that. Maybe something something in Love Love. Maybe. I, I, I honestly could tell you maybe 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 it's it's like one of those things that's not explained like like on purpose like for example Aaron becoming a bird and I had this argument recently on Twitter actually or and Reddit I think Aaron became a natural bird how I have no idea how did how did the ghosts in the Serpent Corp appear now some people say oh that's, that's an aberration that's that, that that's just hallucinating I don't believe that I think the ghosts were actually there I, I think the ghosts were legit there I don't. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. I think the ghosts are actually there, and I think and it's unexplained. And you know what? That is fine because no one, you don't really need an explanation. Because what's important is the message. Now, please, please don't hear me saying stories should have plot holes, stories should break their law, stories should do this, this, and that. No, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying when it comes to small things that are not that's not like plot important or changes anything. I'm saying. You know what? Not everything needs to be explained. Would it be great if it was explained? Of course it would be great. If, if we had a really concrete answer, this is why Aaron turned into a bird, because this is this, this is why we see the circle ghost. That would be great. But you know what? We don't. We don't. We don't. And that is completely fine. 
Could you say, I knock off points of AOT for that? You could absolutely say, I knock off points of AOT for that. But I think, in uh, my personal opinion, and as a, as, a, as, a, as a person who critiques art and a person who enjoys art, I would really just implore you, really, does it really matter if we know the specific mechanics? Does it break any rules? Does it, does it, does it, does it create a plot hole? Right? No. It'd be one thing if, it, it'd be one thing. Here, I'll close this. It'd be one thing if the ghost of the Servant Corps appeared and they said, hey, Mikasa, Aaron's in the mouth. Go kill him. Then you could say, well, wait a second, how, how did they know? But the reason why they're there is for thematic reasons. Remember what I just said, it's for thematic reasons. Why does Aaron become a bird? Aaron becomes a bird to conclude his character arc and to conclu conclude Mikasa's character arc. Why does the Surrey Corps appear to provide closure? Why, is it, why, is, why does he get looped for these nine? As I said, it seems to be the perfect, if, you want, if, if, you, if the goal is to punish Aaron, it's, it is the perfect time to do it. It's when he's not free, and it's the day he mom, and it's the day his mom dies. That is the perfect time. If, if the goal is to punish him, that is the perfect time to loop it. So, if I'm going to base my base my theory off of this, I'm just going to say it's for thematic reasons, just like the bird, just like the story core, yada yada yada. So that is the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for putting up with the whiteboard. This will be hopefully the last time I use a whiteboard. That's so why I really appreciate you guys all for staying for this. Um, I'll see you in the next video.